Different than Beard is another guy called Tom. Let me tell you about Beard. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, ever since the couple, you know, disciples of Jesus. They were kind of weirdos. Not too much. But not too much. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you want to make it.
<laughs> the lone clapper. That was Weaver of Dreams by Victor Young and uh, John Gross on tenor, Max Huberto on drums, uh, uh, Brad Pearson on bass, and Jimmy James Fraser on piano, the Jimmy James Fraser Quartet. Thank you all so much for being here uh, with us. And even though here with us means here in a mostly empty sanctuary, except for Diane and Tom and Jamie at the controls, but uh, we hope that you are able to connect with us online and appreciate this gift of music that comes from the Jimmy James Fraser Quartet. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome to St. Andrews Wesley United Jazz Vespers online during this Omicron wave. Uh, we're just trying to keep everybody safe, including you, uh, but we, we trust that we are connected in a spirit of life and of light and of love uh, that doesn't isn't bothered by distance, geographical distance, or spatial time. So whenever you tune in, welcome. St. Andrews Wesley is an LGBTQ plus affirming, open-minded, open-hearted congregation that seeks to live in the path of Jesus, that we might be more committed to the work of justice and peace and compassion in the world and in our own lives. And in January, we take that turn into a new year, and it's a good time to look through our closets and do some sorting or our pantry or our storage unit and sort of clean out and review what is there. We, we might even do the same with our own tradition and take a look at some of the scriptures and see what is there in that treasure house of wisdom. And so in this season of epiphany, the season of insight, we're going to be looking at some of the parables of Jesus a way that he taught that began with familiarity but then often caught people by surprise and opened questions about who he was and what God is, is about. And so we'll begin that exploration today. But first, let's go into our next piece, Would You Kindly, and this is an original by Jimmy James Fraser.
words. Thank you so much. Thank you all. And thank you for the composition, Jimmy James. So here's a cup. Imagine that I put it into your hands and I invite you to collect the entire Pacific Ocean and put it into the cup. Uh, uh, you might laugh at the obvious and say it's impossible, which is true. But that's exactly the kind of challenge that Jesus was up against. When he needed to figure out how to communicate the ineffable using words, how do you speak about that which is beyond words using words and ideas? He needed to try and figure out how you speak about the infinite which is by definition beyond our comprehension. He needed to figure out how to talk about God when all we have is a little cup to put that infinite reality into. And so, recognizing the obvious difficulty, he chose to speak in short stories called parables, these are stories that begin harmless enough, but then they often take a different path. They lead off of the familiar path into unknown territories, into the unconventional. Take this story, for example, from the Gospel of Mark. One day Jesus went to the lakeshore, and people noticed him there, and so they went down to see if he'd teach anything that day. Before long, the gathering grew so large that Jesus decided to step into a boat and push out a little so that he could see everyone. And then he sat down in the boat, and everyone else sat down on the sand right up to the water's edge, and he began to teach using parables. What is the kingdom of God like, he asked. Well, it's like a person who scatters seed on the ground, and then he sleeps and rises, goes about his business, and day by day the seed sprouts and grows. He doesn't know how. The earth bears fruit of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. Jesus usually doesn't explain exactly what he meant. That kind of defeats the purpose, like needing to explain a good joke. If you don't immediately understand what a parable means, that's probably a good thing because the parable is meant to tease the mind into activity. What does this mean the kingdom of God is like a seed? Who's the farmer? What does it mean that this person just needs to plant the seed and then the seed pretty much takes care of itself. No need for genetic modification or powerful fertilizer. And what does the farmer springing into action when the harvest comes represent? Is there an answer page at the back of the book? And no, Diane, I'm sorry, there is no answer page at the back of the book that we can conveniently turn to. That also would be missing the point. And so maybe you've heard this parable before, or maybe it's the first time. And once you've heard a story, though, you can't unhear it. And perhaps, like the seed that grows quietly hidden underground, the seed of this story will sprout and grow in you. We know not how exactly, and so we call it grace. Stablemates by Benny Golson.
Thank you. That day on the lake, and Jesus taught about the incomprehensible, the intimate mystery we call God in parable. A parable works kind of like a Zen koan. You know, those brain teasers that make no sense and are meant to put a stop to our calculating mind. Probably the most famous Zen koan is, what is the sound of one hand clapping? That's it just one sentence, but like a seed, if you work on it long and hard enough and allow it to work on you, it just might lead to a breakthrough. The Zen tradition calls this breakthrough into awareness satori. It doesn't mean you've understood anything rationally. It means you've gone beyond reason to an entirely new way of being and a new way of seeing the world with fresh eyes. Satori comes in a flash of insight, an intuitive grasp of that which goes beyond the logical. So when people wanted Jesus to say something about God, he took a similar approach and used parables. Here's another short one. With what can we compare the kingdom of God, he asked. It's like a mustard seed, which, when sown on the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. And yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all the shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can come and make their nests in the shade. Now, remember, Jesus wasn't giving a lesson in botany. He didn't care if the mustard seed is actually the smallest seed or if it can be factually proven that it grows into the greatest of all the shrubs, he's using the natural world to make a larger point. The realm of God is like that which seems utterly insignificant, small and worthless. You might not even notice it, but it grows into something that is great and significant and of immeasurable worth. Why? Why use a mustard seed as a comparison for infinity? I don't know. But about 700 years ago, a German author, abbot, and mystic, Meister Eckhart, wrote, the seed of God is in us. If you're an intelligent and hard-working farmer, it will thrive and grow up into God, whose seed it is. And its fruits will be God fruits. Pear trees grow into, sorry, pear seeds grow into pear trees. Nut seeds grow into nut trees, and God seeds grow into God. Well, may the seed of this parable work in you until we all become grown into love. And if that makes no sense to you literally, then you're very, you very well might be on the right track. In 1228, about 50 years before Meister Eckhart began to teach, a Chinese Zen master gave a class. Without his knowing, the students took notes, which they later presented to him and encouraged him to make it into a book. He agreed and began the book this way. If you like sweets and easy living, skip this book. It's about people tremendously intent on being reborn. It can happen to you, he wrote. In a flashing moment, something opens. You are new all through. You see the same unseen world with fresh eyes. The universe renewing power comes by grace, not logic. Whatever you do or wherever you are seems to make little difference. It doesn't make sense. It makes you. And there you have it, the spirit of parable. One day, Jesus stepped into a boat, pushed out a little, sat, and began to tell a story. And the story worked like a seed. We know not how, but it sprouted and grew and is still told today where it grows for those who have ears to hear. And now, let's see if you have ears to hear some more great jazz with very early 
by Bill Evans.
You know, for 28 years or more, St. Andrew's Wesley has offered Jazz Vespers every Sunday of the year until COVID happened. And now with the wave of Omicron, uh, we find ourselves back in a situation where we just have the occasional online service. Uh, so uh, next week we won't have uh, Jazz Vespers. We might on January 24th, so please watch our website to see whether or not that's going to happen in person. We really hope so. Uh, or if that once again will be online or if we'll postpone yet again. So we live in this stage of uncertainty, um, but we do hope that we're able to keep the connections with you and keep the spirit of Jazz Vespers alive and flowing. Wherever we gather, whether it's online or here in person, we always appreciate any contributions that you're able to give to further the various ministries of this congregation. Uh, just earlier today, we were unloading some furniture that's going to a refugee family, and this congregation has helped support 18 individuals over the course of years who are in, finding themselves in this uh, tragic situation and relocating here in Canada, which we hope for them will be a blessing. Uh, we support all kinds of work within reconciliation and art and spirit and social justice here in the city and various services like Jazz Vespers, uh, which we hope touches your heart and engages your mind. Wherever and whenever we gather, we do so recognizing that we come together on the unceded and traditional territories of the Squamish and the Musqueam and the, and the Tsleil-Waututh people. And we recognize this as a way of furthering the work of reconciliation in our communities and just increasing the awareness that we have uh, among us. And so what I'd like to do is just invite you to pause wherever you are, just stop for a moment and take a, a few deep breaths. I'm going to ring the bell here and we'll allow that to call your attention back to your breath. And so when you hear the bell, simply be aware of your breathing, allow your breathing to be natural, flowing, deep, filling your lungs all the way, emptying your lungs, allowing your body to relax, and allowing yourself to feel the blessing of your body and the blessing of the peace of Christ. connected by the beauty of music, the gift of this day, and the unseen spirit of life that animates our very being. We give thanks. Amen. The next piece is by Hugh Fraser, who many of you will remember with great respect and fondness. And it's no coincidence that Jimmy James Fraser has the same last name. Uh, because they come from the same family. And we're just so grateful that the music continues to flow from that uh, creative TNA. So the message by Hugh Fraser.
Once again, that's John Gross, Max Huberto on drums, Brad Pearson on the bass, and Jimmy James Fraser on the piano, the James, Jimmy James Fraser Quartet. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so as you come to the close of your day and you turn your attention to whatever business is at hand, whether that's preparing some dinner or doing the laundry or taking down the rest of your Christmas decorations, remember the seed that Jesus talked about, the small seed that grows into something great and provides refuge for those who are vulnerable and bruised. We remember the seed that is hidden but it's transformative, is small but powerful. And remember that this seed is in you and in each one of us. And so may you go into your day, into your week, and to the rest of your life with the blessing of the one who sometimes taught while sitting in a boat on a lake, the blessing of the one who is the creator of all seeds, the blessing of the Spirit that is the life force that allows every seed to grow and flourish. Shalom and amen. We'll close with goodbye pork pie hat. Okay, thank you again.